bandit strike again in Zamfara State as they abduct students in the hometown of Governor Matawali. Meanwhile, five of the abducted students of Government Day Secondary School, Kaya, have regained freedom. And the presidency says Amnesty International has no legal right to exist in Nigeria. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. Bandits have again abducted children uh, in Zamfara State. Now, the victims in this, uh, at this time are students of the Government Day Secondary School, Kaya, in Maradun local government area of the state. The state government had shut down schools across the state following the abduction of 73 students, and also they have impo uh, imposed a dusk to dawn curfew across the state. The good news is five of these abducted students have been returned. Well, joining us to discuss the issue of abductions across our schools is uh, political technocrat Dayo Coyote, and uh, to be joining us later is Colonel Samson Edet, retired. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Coyote, for joining us. Anne, how are you? Long time. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Um, so it's interesting, looking at the um, number of students that have been abducted yet again uh, in Zamfara State, 73 Good news is five, according to reports, five of them were returned by the bandits. And I mean, one would want to be a fly on the wall to understand why just five of these students um, were returned. But that's a conversation that needs to be had with, you know, security operatives. But um, I've spoken to many educationists, I've spoken to security operatives and experts, and they all um, have talked continuously, you know, ask questions as to why schools and, um, you know, the education in the uh, Northwest is being targeted. Um, so I'm trying to understand, maybe you can tell us from a political perspective why these bandits seem to be continuously going to schools. And let's not forget the NDA also is a training academy, which is a school. Why do you think that they're attacking school children? Yeah, uh, uh, let me first of all say, even for returning five of those uh, children, it's still no good news. Even when they re even by the time they return all of them, it's still no good news, because already they have caused some kind of psychological distress within our society, and this thing has been reoccurring all of the time without nobody looking for how to tackle this problem. Now, why are they attacking school children? Just because they know that these children are very vulnerable to so their attack. And they know that because they are children, their parents will want to come after them and pay whatever they ask them to pay immediately. And to that extent, they will rather want to go for those that are very vulnerable and then that will also make people to stand up immediately to wanting to pay the kind of ransom they are asking for. Um, now, we know that the, these school children that were abducted um, um, were, I think initially there were 91 school children um, that yeah. were abducted in Niger states before the Zamfara yeah. situation happened. And, yeah. they, and they were recently, you know, released because thousands of, millions of Naira, rather, was paid for, you know, their release. But where I'm going with this is that ransom payment is the bone of contention here. Many have wondered how we can win the war against in insurgency, ag against banditry, against terrorism, if we, one way or the other, are the ones funding it. For example, you just made mention that they target these children because they know that their parents would want to move heaven and earth to make sure that yeah. these monies are paid and so that they can get their loved ones, their loved ones out. Uh, and so really, if we are, as a country, saying that we're fighting terrorism, how are we doing that if we continue to pay these ransoms? And on the other hand, you cannot say you will not pay any ransom because your loved one is in the custody of bandits. So why, what are we really doing? Yes. You see, it is always good for us to face the facts. And it's a pity that most governments, and especially this government, when they see anybody saying the truth, they see that person as an enemy. I'm not the enemy of government, but rather I will still say the truth because Nigeria belongs to every one of us. Two questions you have asked now. One, 
there is no how this banditry will stop in as much as it is seemingly, I use that word seemingly, looking as if some people are just being enriched through kidnapping and then giving their ransom. And I will come, I will come to it fully. Now, Melifa, former deputy governor of, uh, of a central bank, came out sometimes to talk about this uh, uh, banditry in Nigeria. Uh, Baraje, the chairman of uh, NPDP, that led the PDP of that period to APC during 19, I think 1915 election, also addressed a press conference as regards this issue. Late Madam Taraba said the same thing. Of recent, a security expert mentioned some things. Some time ago, Pam Pop of CNA also mentioned some things. Even late Tabata said it, that any government that cannot quench any form of banditry and insurgency in its political environment within 24 or 48 hours, seen as an accomplice. And to what extent has this government arrested any of these guys and punished them? Rather, rather, the moment they, they said they are now repentant, you, you say, let us absorb them back to the society. So how do you think this thing will not continue? There are a lot of people out there they will say, that, oh, this is a good business. Since they have seen it as a good business, then they will continue to be doing, to, 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 be, to be perpetrating these nefarious activities within our political environment. Mr. Kayode, let me and come in there. Let me, say, so, I'm so sorry. Let me in, come in second, there. One second. Let me come in there for Don't a let second. Me give you this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me come in there. When you say that, when you bring up the issue of ransom payment and us fueling or financing, you know, terrorism in the country. Let's use the Kaduna State um, example where the governor has said that no ransoms should be paid. We have seen the backlashes that he's gotten. We've seen that people still have to pay. Um, they go behind the backs of government to, and security agencies to pay. Now, there are also people who um, say to us that the police allegedly would tell them that it's best that they pay so that they can get their loved ones out. But when we keep making, I mean, from what you said, it looks like government has failed in its job in dealing with this issue of insecurity. But can you blame government when, for example, an El Rufai says, do not pay ransom because you're funding terrorism. And then the people that themselves go ahead and pay for their family members to be released. Really, can we just uh, solely put the blame on the government and security agencies? What is the role of government? What is the role of government as stipulated by 1999 Constitution as amended? To ensure well-being of the people, economic well-being of the people, and to ensure security of lives and properties. When this thing is not ensured, what do we call that? It's total government failure. You're talking about air fire. Is it working the talk? Did you not say the other time that they went to settle some people in charge? Did you not say it? Did you not mention it? Like the one I was going to say the other time, when you say, when, when the president was saying he was ready to change the security chiefs the other time, and people were clamoring that the president should change the security chiefs, I was among the few that was saying, no, it is not about changing security chiefs. It is about people in government, people at the end of affairs, changing their philosophy as regards how to sort out this incessant kidnapping and, uh, and the fossil obtaining of money from the people. So either we like it or not, one, the government is not working in stock, pay stop pay ransom. Who, who are the people paying it behind? Do they want to tell us that those five children were released just like that? Two, two, it is high time that those in the air of affairs, that is the president of the country, the governors of the states, the chairman of local governments, should rise up to their bellies now because all these things stops at their table on how to stop it because they are all operating within their political space. And the moment 
the moment they cannot stop it, then the government has failed. No more, no less. Government has failed. Can we really say government has failed when the, the army is doing its bit, the police is doing its bit? Let's not also forget that we have our soldiers overstretched, and they're not just in the northwest. We have them in the northeast. We have them in the southeast. We have them in the south-south. And, and if we were to number these soldiers, they're not as many as we would want them to be. And, and I remember speaking to someone um, last week who said that we even have some of our soldiers, uh, you know, a detachment of them, working with, um, you know, the AU and, and the ECOWAS. So we obviously have um, not enough soldiers to do the job, but can you really say that they have failed? Because it seems that they're doing what they can. But, of course, the obvious question is, is that enough? But my other no. question is, um, I remember, I think, between June, of, between June of 2011 and the end of March of 2020, um, apparently, I think there's estimated 13.4 um, million people have been abducted, um, or rather, 18.4 million dollars uh, has been paid for uh, abductions, you know, all over, either in the northwest or in the northeast, um, and in other parts of Nigeria, to these bandits. And 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 I was thinking about it because. Um, this is a lot of money going into buying guns. And we keep asking questions about guns that are coming in. The other day, I was watching a, a program I did uh, about four years ago on the radio. We were talking, asking questions about um, guns that were found coming into Nigeria, some that were stopped uh, in South Africa, uh, another that was traced to come in from Turkey. But uh, nobody has been able to come up with a tentative report saying that those guns were traceable to Mr. A, B, or C. It literally has died down. So let's talk about the nitty gritty of fighting terrorism in this country. If we are just yes. trying to stop bandits and we're not looking for who's bringing in these guns, whether it be for banditry, whether it be for um, the elections or whatever reason, if we're not able to probe that, can we really go forward in fighting this insecurity, this hydra headed monster that we're facing every other day? And that is exactly what I'm trying to say, uh, Anne. You see, number one, your first, your first question. On what platform a week or two weeks ago, immediately after the Apple stance in uh, Afghanistan, I was on a particular platform and I praised our Nigerian army. I praised our security forces for the gallantry they have shown we Nigerians, especially in facing these so-called bandits. But unfortunately, they are not well equipped. Unfortunately, they are not well remunerated. Unfortunately, they are not encouraged properly. Unfortunately, they are not even being taken good care of. The way Boko Haram is are taking good care of their soldiers. That is why. Two, if you are talking about gun running, you and I, do we have that temerity? especially in terms of economic prowess, to bring in guns and ammunition into this country? No. It is these so-called leaders. And when I say leaders, I mean both political leaders, economic leaders, whatever leader we have, that are bringing in these things. How many of them has the government apprehended? They have seen, there was even a time that the president came on here to say, look, all these guns and the ones that are being used that were used, formerly used in uh, Libya and all that, that doesn't know how they are finding their ways into, into Nigeria. I have forgotten that for a very long time, uh, 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 the, the border, the border at, uh, in, in Southwest, in Seme, had been blocked. Where borders in the north were opened. So where are these things coming in from? Where? So these are issues that we need to look at properly to be able to know who and who are behind all this. Again, when, but recently, when somebody... but recently, the, the DSS has actually um, alluded to the fact that um, they have information. Which remember, the the a former a retired um, armed force um, officer was on a, a, a channel yes. talking the about the, fu the funders and people, yes. Uh, and, and, of course, the DSS had also said that they're aware of that information, but that they're waiting for a go-ahead from the president himself um, for, to, for to be waiting? able to investigate. So, 
Um, of course. For how long? Have you forgotten that they said they have they have some 400, 400 people in their custody who they claim have been sponsoring these people? Are you also aware that Saudi uh, 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 Dubai, Dubai or Saudi Arabia sent some names down to Nigeria as against those people that are that are that are funding these people? What have they done with those names? So the moment you are not doing anything, then you are giving we Nigerians. We are giving us that idea that yes, you can be you can be held as an accomplice in all these things that are happening. Because it is only when a thief is stealing and the head of the house knows that that guy is stealing and is not doing anything, he will continue stealing. Not until when he or she is being punished, he will, he will stop stealing. And that is exactly what we are saying in Nigeria today. Let's talk about the schools again. Amnesty International recently tweeted uh, and described the latest incident uh, in Zamfara State as disturbing. In fact, I'd like to quote them directly. They said um, that the attacks on schools and abduction of school children are war crimes. So I want to ask you, does it really qualify as a war crime? Are we at war in Nigeria right now? Yes, when you see when you see all these people shooting sporadically, going to capture a whole a whole village, a whole town, a whole local government, and hosting their flags there and all that. What do we call that? It is war. It is that some people have decided to declare war on Nigeria. A, 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 a war declared on a part of Nigeria is war declared on the whole country. Because before you know it, by the time they are, they are successful there, they will move down, down south. And even we have been seeing fringes of it here. So it is total war. Whatever they are doing can be classified as a, a, a guerrilla warfare. Mm. Because this, these people are not Nigerians. Most of them are not. Some, some of them that were captured, when they speak, those people that they were speaking with are saying their, their song it's not that of a Nigerian Fulani or that of Nigeria, Nigerian Hausa man or that of Nigeria, whatever. You know, they are all, they are all from Senegal, Putajalon Island, uh, 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 Bamako, and all that. You know, so it's war. Amnesty International is very, very right as to what they have said. And because Amnesty International is an international organization, that are looking for peace to be everywhere. So they, they have a say, whatever is happening, they can, they can make their comments. It's only that they cannot act, but they can make their comments and then advise appropriately. Talking about acting here, it brings me back to the question I always ask, uh, you know, what is, what, what is the challenge of government? Because like I said earlier on, the bulk stops at the table of the government, whether it be state or federal. And and you see and, 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 and you see in the case of Benue where there's been a back and forth between the presidency and Governor Autumn and you know mm. both governments pointing fingers at each other. So I'm asking, what is the challenge in fighting this issue of terrorism and fighting against these bandits? And of course Boko Haram is on the other hand, and we also have non state actors creeping up every other day, and those also have to be handled. Um, what do you think is the problem, and why have we not been very successful? Uh, and... It's just one challenge. It's okay. just one challenge that we have. People that are concerned are never, never ready to say the truth. Because they know when they say the truth, some people might, might spill beans. What exactly do you mean by say the truth? What, what is the truth in this regard? They, I mean, because we they, all see it plainly that we have a group of people who are armed, uh, disguised as certain groups of people, only to perpetrate violence. So what, ex what again, is the truth that we do not truth know? In terms of, truth in terms of how did these people get into our country. Truth in terms of, I repeat, how did these people find themselves in our country. But we all know that we have porous borders in Nigeria. That's not, that's not uh, news, who, who, who is it? Who brought them in? Who brought, who brought these people in for some purposes? Only God knows. And the purpose, we can, we can ask, we can ask uh, uh, Baraje, the leader of uh, MPDP, what he said the other time. He said that he won APC leadership not to bring these people into the country. 
that when you bring them into the country, it will be hard for you to send them away. Mr. Kaede, you're alleging, you're alleging that Mr. President's political party uh, uh, is it. responsible it is, it is, for it the in terrorism the that there. we're experiencing in the form of uh, banditry in Nigeria. In you're saying there. that the sitting, the sitting government, which is the APC government, is responsible yes. for the terrorism that we as a country are experiencing right now. Baraja said it. Baraja said it in his, uh, in his uh, press conference. It's in the public clear. He said it to everybody. He said it to everybody. And again, and again, the moment, the moment we have not been punishing these people, we have not been arresting them, we have not been able to showcase their faces, then what are we talking about? It defines complicity. It amounts to complicity. Madam Talaba also said it. The late Madam Talaba said it. He said, if this government is not careful, it will spill beans about so many, so many of these insecurity breaches in this country. He said it. It's in the public, it's in the public led there. It's not a hidden fact. Let's talk about where are the 400, where are the 400 people that were be, that, that they said that are, are funding these people? Where are they finding it difficult? Why are they finding it difficult to prosecute them? Why are they finding it difficult to bring them to the glare of the people? These are issues. Let us say the truth so that the devil could be ashamed. Okay. It is high time that Nigerians, Nigerians experience security in their, on, on their fatherland. Let's talk about this business becoming very a bit too lucrative because um, let me think outside the box. Because this is generating much money, I gave you a statistics, $18.3 uh, million, yes. dollars, not Naira. Um, this seems to be very lucrative. What's to, who's to say that um, other people who may not necessarily be these bandits don't take advantage of the situation and join the business? How do we try to make sure that this doesn't become something that is a playing field for all and sundry? Yes, uh, no doubt about it uh, that uh, some other people that are not even supposed to be part of these bandits are also practicing. Uh, 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 they call it uh, obtenance by force through kidnapping. I mean, we have seen, we have heard of uh, instances whereby some people will go and kidnap uh, themselves and then they'll be asking for ransom and they are being caught here and there. No doubt about it, we have been seeing it. But because the thing has now become very lucrative, there's no way these bandits will want to leave it until when, until when the leadership decides to say the truth and face it squarely and then walk the talk, walk the talk. Not until when we start to do that, it will continue. And as I always tell, tell leadership, the leadership of this country, that it is high time that we, 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 we walk on the path of truth. I mean, nobody, nobody is going to punish anybody for saying the truth. Yes, you could be ashamed for a while, but along the line, people will say, yes, we're all human. We're all human. And it's normal for anybody to err. It is for us to now forgive such a person. Let our leadership come out and say the truth. Yes, we have done this, we have done this, we have done that, we are sorry. But now let us join hands together to put an end to this is Do you know the kind of effedicine is having on us? A lot of investors have refused coming to Nigeria. I am one of those that this thing is affecting. People are never ready to invest money again in Nigeria because the place is not secure. They don't know how they will come to Nigeria. They don't know how safe they are when, uh, if they come to Nigeria. So this is a big issue. It is also affecting the employment rates. It is affecting our direct foreign investment. It okay. is affecting our GDP. Okay. I mean, these are the multiplier effects of these circumstances that we are refused to cope since all these days. Now, quickly before we wrap up, because we're almost out of time, um, the governor has imposed a dusk to dawn curfew uh, in the state. Do you think this might help to at least push back on these um, terrorists again? Um, this is obviously going to affect businesses, it's going to affect schooling, 
And already, children in <coughs> both the Northeast and Northwest have been, uh, have had their, uh, you know, education calendar uh, messed up because of the kidnappings and the abductions. Um, so where does this leave the education system uh, in that part of the, uh, the country? Number one, does curfew, does curfew affect bandits? Bandits don't, don't follow rules and regulations. They don't know what laws are. But maybe that Doesn't would also help them. the security agents to be able to track who's who, because if the normal people are staying at home, then you can tell who's no, walking, moving no. around. Even, even when maybe. people are not staying at home, if, you want, if, they, if they are serious to track them, they will track them. Have you seen our police tracking a stolen, a stolen phone before? I've seen our policemen tracking a stolen phone, stolen in Lagos, and they track it down to Enugu. How about that? So who is saying who is saying without coffee? Our security agency will not work. We thought without coffee, they will work if they are ready to work. The thing is, our leadership should now track the parts of the truth. No more, no less. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Mr. Daya Kayade is a political technocrat. Uh, thank you for joining mm -hmm. us on the, uh, in the, the show today. Thanks for having me, Anne. All right, thank, thank you, you for joining us on the show. All right, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, the presidency is attacking Amnesty International over critical reports. What's in the report? We get to find out after this break.